Do-it-yourself CO2 is a cheap and easy way to start providing your plants with CO2. But is it safe? Often I'm asked if shutting off the CO2 for the night, either manually or with a solenoid, would cause the bottles to explode. In this video, we'll dig deep and answer the simple question. Will my CO2 bottles explode? So let's just get down to it. Will your bottles explode? Now we are talking about the citrus acid mixed with baking soda. We're not talking about the yeast and the sugar. That's a totally different thing. So downright, the answer is pretty much no. It shouldn't explode, but you know, you never know. These type of things can happen. First, let's go over some little details. First of all, how does it work? We're using two bottles. In bottle A, we have a citrus mix. In the bottle B, we have the baking soda mix. If mixed together, it'll start producing CO2. So once we have the mix set up, we start the cycle by squeezing bottle A into bottle B, basically the citrus acid into bottle B, so it'll start the reaction. In bottle B, the reaction started, it starts producing CO2, and the CO2 starts going out of the line into your tank. At the same time, it starts creating pressure in bottle B. The pressure in bottle B pushes into bottle A, which in turn, pushes the citrus acid back into bottle B again, starting the cycle over again. Now, if you remember in high school, this is pretty much basic science. It's caused by equilibrium. Now, each side is trying to keep an equilibrium. So if one has more pressure, it'll push into the other side. If the other side has more pressure, it'll push into the other side. And once both sides have reached that equilibrium, it should be a stalemate. Nothing should go into one bottle or the other. So this is what should be happening if you turn off your CO2 at night. These two bottles should reach an equilibrium and everything should be good. But how far would it go before it reaches equilibrium, before it stops? Well, let's take a look at the meter that is on your do-it-yourself CO2 contraption. The meter goes up to 6 kg per square centimeter, which is around basically 85 PSI. Most of the time, I've never seen the meter go that high. It had a couple of times, but nothing came out of it. So let's just say that's our top, 85 PSIs. Now let's take a look at how much PSIs a bottle of soda can hold. When in the factory, when bottle soda is made, CO2 is pushed into the rate of a bottle at about 1,200 pounds per square inch. Now that's just pushing CO2 in the bottle and capped. That's it. So it shouldn't have any bearing on the structure of the bottle itself at that moment. Once the bottle is capped and goes to the market, it does not exert that much PSIs. At room temperature, the PSIs in the bottle should be around 40 to 55 PSIs. Have you ever left a bottle of soda in a car, in a hot car, and it just starts expanding? Well, heat does cause an expansion in the pressure in the bottle. Google basically says in a hot car, the bottle reaches about 100 PSIs. The bottom line is these two liter bottles of soda, max PSI it can hold is 150. So beyond that, it starts deforming the bottle and explodes. So all in all, we should be more than enough safe turning off the CO2 on this do-it-yourself contraptions. So let's just go over what can happen if something fails. Now the problem is this, the bottles can hold some massive PSIs. The thing is, is the contraption itself. Obviously, if they made this contraption work with a do-it-yourself CO2 solution, it should be able to hold its weight. One thing I'm only usually concerned about is the hose that people use. Now, let's take a look at the hoses we use. We usually use vinyl hoses, the hoses we use for air tubing for our fish tanks. Those that I saw around the internet rates up to max 55 PSIs. If you go with silicone, I see it rated around 100 PSIs or more. And polyurethane, it's rated about 75 to 150 PSIs, depending on the brand. So that is probably where one of your weak spots will happen. Your hose will most likely pop or split before your bottles even explode. The other thing that some people might see is the hose popping out of the contraption itself. Now, not only does heat affect pressure in a bottle, but it also affects the malleability of the tubing itself. The hotter the tubing gets, the weaker the tubing gets. So I really highly suggest you do use tubing that's rated to use with CO2, or just go with a polyurethane tubing, which is what I use for my CO2 setups. So let's go back to the contraption itself. The weakest part of the contraption is where the hoses connect to, as well as the needle valve that you see there. 
all in all, these contraptions that I see, the needle valve is metal, and it's going to be really hard plastic, so we should be safe. It should hold more than 85 PSIs. Now, as I said, if a bottle holds more than 150 PSI, it starts deforming. If you see that, you need to right away release as much gas as you can in that DIY setup. Once the pressure is all released, switch out the bottles, dump the mixture, and start over again. And speaking on bottles, I suggest using bottles with the round tops. As you can see here, there are some two liter bottles that have a narrower neck, as you see here. The bottles with the narrower necks don't handle as much PSI as the rounded top. It basically has to do with physics and how the pressure is distributed among the structure of the bottle. Now just remember, once you cut off the pressure to the do-it-yourself CO2 setup, you need to make sure that you don't jostle the bottles around anymore. You don't want that mixture to keep reacting and producing CO2. If there's a chance that you knock the bottles over, quickly release the pressure and then start the reaction all over again. And if you have no clue what we're talking about, you can actually make do-it-yourself CO2 for your aquariums. If you don't know how, here's a video on how to do it. And then again, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button to see more aquarium goodness. Hit that like button. And remember, stay wet with your tanks and have fun out there. I love you guys. Bye.